I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh** I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh** Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Gene Edwards. This is my game review for game number three of the Battle of Alberta Western Conference semifinal matchup between the Flames and the Oilers at the Rogers Place in Edmonton, Alberta for May 22nd, 2022. Near perfection. This game was Almost a Picasso when it comes to the hockey standards. This game is what the Oilers need to play for the remaining of the playoffs. And you know what? If they do, they will hoist that Stanley Cup in about a month. And I'm not even kidding you. That's how good of a game that the Edmonton Oilers played last night. They shut the Calgary Flames right down. It's the first time I've seen them shut this team down in a very long time. So... Just an amazing performance, an amazing night for one Evander Kane. I'm going to get into that shortly. Um, but yeah, no complaints at all about this game. Nothing. Team effort. Um, let's get into my game notes. So the very first thing I noticed within the first five minutes is all the lines were going. The third line, the fourth line, they were contributing in one way or another. They were hitting, they were defending well. It was a very well-played uh, first period. Um, couldn't say enough about the whole team in general. Brett Kulik takes a point shot that trickles by Markstrom and just hits the post. I thought we had our first goal uh, going into the, or in the first period. It turned out there was no scoring in the first period. But it also turned out that the Edmonton Oilers outshot the Calgary Flames 20-7 to in that first period. A big turnaround from the previous two games. Um, in the second period, the Kane show begins. But we're, it started off with a Zach Hyman goal at first. And then Kane gets a natural hat trick in six minutes. And I'm going to get more into Kane and what a uh, what, uh, juggernaut he was in this game shortly. Uh, McDavid, McDavid's control of the puck, they, they said it on the, on the broadcast, it was like ballerina, like, like he was like a ballerina with the puck, the way he can dance around. It is something to see how he maneuvers so flawlessly on the ice like the city of Edmonton in 2015 when they when they won that lottery they really won a special gift for the Edmonton Oilers um there's not much more you can say about Connor McDavid and his leadership um, it's mind blowing and he just gets better and better and better. And you, just when you think that he's capped out and he's hit to this point, he hits another level and another level. It's sickening to watch this. Absolutely sickening to watch this. Um, in the third period, Jacob Markstrom got pulled. Uh, so Calgary went to their backup, uh, and then Cody CC sustained a hand injury taking a point shot right to the wrist to the hand area it's one thing with the oilers right now they are banged up uh i'm hoping cc is okay he did return to the game but he took a pretty good shot uh we also know that leon dry is dealing with the high ankle sprain and there is rumors that darnell nurse has a 
core muscle issue of some sort that may require surgery in the off season. Uh, that is a rumor. I haven't actually done any research on that to back it, but I'm telling you, this time of year, um, these guys go through hell to win that championship trophy, and that's why the Stanley Cup, in my opinion, is the greatest trophy in all sports to win. Is the hardest, the toughest um, trophy to win in professional sports. Um, even going back to the early 80s when uh, the New York Islanders won their fifth and final cup against the Oilers, the one thing Mark Messier noticed was he thought he would be walking, he was walking by their dressing room after the game thinking they were all celebrating that. No, they were all putting bandages on and all that and removing bandages. So it's, it's the hardest trophy. And I'm telling you right now, this team, if they can play what they did last night, they can continue to play like this. The city of Edmonton will be uh, celebrating a Stanley Cup parade and their sixth championship in franchise history. Um, because that's the way they need to play. That, that way, if they play like that, they're going to beat Tampa Bay. If they play like that, they're going to beat Colorado or whoever's up next. But they have to play like that the, the whole way through. They can't let off the gas. Jay Woodcroft, whatever he's doing to motivate these guys, he is doing the right things. And watching Connor McDavid, you know, take the team on his back too, I think helps and gets everyone to work harder for them. Uh, let's get into the, um, oh, one more note before I get into the scoring summary. Milan Lucic, absolutely railroad. Um, Mike Smith last night, um, he did look like appear to let up, but he still hit him pretty hard, um, into the boards. Mike Smith had to, uh, leave the ice for concussion protocol. So Koskinen went in for, uh, I think it was four minutes where, where's that stat here? Um, so Koskinen went in for four minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, he didn't even have to make a save, though. There wasn't even a single shot on him. But, yeah, that wasn't cool for Milan Lucic. I, I understand he's trying to win a Stanley Cup, but you don't, you don't... Anyway, bottom line, he got he got a five-minute major in a game misconduct, booted out of the game. Good for him. Um, that was unnecessary, totally unnecessary. Um, he did, like I say, in all fairness, he did look like he let up a little bit, but he still had enough momentum going in there to to uh, smoke Mike Smith pretty good. Anyway, let's get into the scoring summary. As I mentioned, uh, in the first period, there was no goals. Second period, it started with Zach Hyman, his sixth from Leon Dreisaitl and McDavid. Then the Evander Kane show commences with him getting his eighth at 6.58 his ninth at 751 and his 10th of the playoffs at 1258 um all these goals by the Edmonton Oilers Leon Draisaitl was in on so Leon Draisaitl four assists tonight um McDavid had two McDavid had three assists um just an amazing effort and then unfortunately in the third period uh, Mike Smith's shutout bid ended at 6.34 with Oliver Shillington getting his first from Dylan Dubé and Kale Yarnick. Um, as far as the stars of the game go, I couldn't agree more. Um, Evander Kane, your first star, three goals. I'm also going to mention one other thing. I've been doing these pod, or I don't know, they're not really podcasts, this YouTube channel for... Um, about four or five months now. Um, it's the first time that I noticed a player get into the double digits in the hit column as he had 10 hits as well. So he was a beast. A beast tonight. He was on fire. The Edmonton Oilers have got to figure out a way to sign him. I'm hoping 
that he realizes it's a good fit here being with McDavid and that. But we'll see what happens in the offseason. Hopefully they can come to a number that uh, makes sense for both parties. It's going to be a tricky one to for uh, Holland to navigate, but we'll see what happens. Um, for shots on goal, Edmonton led the way with 41 to 33 hits. Edmonton led the way in that department this time around, uh, 38 to 36. Faceoffs won. The Oilers are still struggling a little bit, but not nearly as bad as Game Two. In Game Two, two thirds of the faceoffs were won by the Calgary Flames. Here, it was a 54 percent advantage, so slightly over half. But the Oilers definitely improved on there. But still, Calgary reigned supreme on that area. Um, Power play opportunities, Edmonton had five, Calgary had four, resulting in zero goals for both teams. Uh, penalty minutes, obviously with the Luchich penalty, Calgary had 27 minutes in penalties as the Oilers had 16 minutes. Block shots, Edmonton 18, uh, Calgary 6. Takeaways, Edmonton 9, uh, to four, and then giveaways were an even 12 for both teams. Um, an amazing effort. I, I, like I said, if the Edmonton Oilers can continue to play like this going forward, this team, this city will have a Stanley Cup parade in a couple in about a month. So, great job, guys. Can't say enough. Wait, can't wait for game number four. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Can't wait till game number four tomorrow night. We will talk to you guys soon. You guys enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. Have a good one. Euler fans, the number one fan base in North America. If you guys like the content that Sammy and I bring you, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and leave messages in the comment section below. We will talk to you soon. Have a great night.